but it, it's time. So, um, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I'm Andrew Palmer, and uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about a way we can make it easier, make it easier for our tests to um, interact with the application by um, the application giving a helping hand to the tests. When we're wow. when we when we're working um, with our tests, uh, quite often we'll find that um, certain things uh, have to change fairly regularly. So um, it might be that uh, the UI changes, um, or it might be that something we have to do changes. The, the actual method, the tasks that we have to perform, have changed. And what that can lead to is um, a change happening in the application and all. That's one of the most common common uh, complaints about uh, testing test information is that the tests are brittle. Um, but it's not really that the tests are brittle. It's more that there's not enough communication between um, the people who are doing the testing and the people who are writing the application. Um, how many of you here um, are working as testers? OK. Um, and how many of you here are working as developers? less of you. And um, how many of you are um, in a separate test team? That's, that's pretty good. Not, not as many of you in a separate test team. So, so the rest of you, are, are the rest of you in um, a, um, like a, an agile team or a team where you have the developers and testers working together? Is that, is that the case? Yeah? Okay. Um, so... <laughs> When, when you're when you're in those um, when you're working together um, in those in those teams, um, do you all work together in um, the uh, three amigos? So you have a, an analyst, um, a developer, and a tester all working together. All of you, excellent. Okay, and when you are um, when you're doing that, are you helping to write the application code, and are the developers helping to write the test code? No. Okay, so so then um, where where it's called the three amigos, um, are you are you all sharing the same machine, or do you have separate machines? Because because um, the the three amigos pattern. Just one moment. Uh, you'll have to stand a little bit farther away from the speaker so that uh, you won't get a feedback. Okay. Right. I I have to I have to go to the back of the room. You can use the podium. That should be good enough. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. But then, but then I'm I'm, I'm trapped behind the podium. Okay. I'll I'll stand where I'm supposed to. Um. So so um, the how, how many people here have heard of mob programming? A few of you. So um, the next question was going to be how many of you are doing it, but if only a few of you have heard of it, then uh, I'm guessing not many. Um, one of one of the um, most effective ways we found of working, um, and this is this is my personal experience. I'm not saying everyone should go out and do this. Um, is to actually have the three people, the, the analyst, the or, or um, product owner, uh, the developer, and the tester all working around the same machine, and you're only working on one aspect at a time, and you take it through um, sort of step by step. Obviously, a lot of organisations aren't set up to do that. Um, so so uh, some of some of the things that um, I take for granted um, might not apply um, to your situations. Um, one of the, one of one of the common reasons for, uh, as I said, for test code changing is because the application code has changed. So, um, if, if the the te the tests appear to be brittle, but it's really just that there's not the communication. Somebody's made a change; they haven't updated it in the tests, and then the tests fail. And sometimes the person you'll know about that is uh, in a continuous integration server. Um, question should be, why should the code change? Um, so single responsibility says that a class should only have one reason to change. At the moment, we've got two reasons to change. One is that the behavior has changed, and you want to do something different. Um, and another is that the application has changed, just, just the UI. We really only want to come and change our test code when the, what we're actually doing, the, the tasks that we are performing are changing. If the UI is changing, 
we really want to be isolated from that. Now, there's some things we can do around that, and I'm sure um, a lot of you have experience with. Uh, how many people um, have had experience with using XPath to um, select their um, elements? Uh, and, and how many of you have had problems with XPath selecting your elements? It's about the same number of hands. Um, so the, the, the common practice is to use something different. And most people would say to use IDs, uh, which is great. Um, but we still have to be fairly intimate with uh, how our application is doing something. So if we have a, um, a select box uh, that we reference by ID, and we want to change that to a radio button, or vice versa, uh, we still have to go and change the test code, because the way we're interacting with that has changed as well. So let's, let's, let's look at some code and, and, um, and some examples. Um, so I've, I've got a uh, simple, simple uh, a very, very simple application here. Um, can you see that? I'll, uh, I'll zoom in. So, so uh, we're working, we're working for a, uh, a company that does uh, dog grooming, um, dog walking, dog sitting, and you've got those three services. And at the moment, you can choose um, by by a text box um, whether you want to uh, what service you want to select. Because that was the easiest thing we could do. We're, we're, we're sort of doing this iteratively. This was the easiest thing we can do. So we've got some code to interact with that, which is here. This will, this will look familiar. Um, how many people here um, are using page objects? OK, and is anyone using Selenium directly? No. Yes, one, one or two. OK. So if we were, if we were using a page object, um, we would use, we, we'd have a page object something like this. But um, for, for, this, for this example, we're just going to talk about how we'd interact with it directly. So um, can, can everyone see that? Is, that, is, the, is the text big enough? Oh, we'll put it in presentation mode. So this is this is the version we're looking at here, UI version one. So we, we hit the uh, we hit the uh, link and we're looking for a CSS selector with the ID of services text and we're looking for the input field within that. Does that look familiar? Is that how most people here would would work with that? And then we send in the key service that we want. And that should run. And of course it's quick because it's Java. straightforward. Um, but now, now somebody's made a change to the, uh, to the UI, because that's what they do. So we're now, we're now at version 2 of the UI, and that's, that's a radio button, because it's only the three choices. That, that's what we want. So uh, we have to change the test code, don't we? Oh. OK. So now um, we've got a new ID it's um, services radio, and now we have to select by the input value. So we're looking for the, the radio button with the value that we're after, and then we click on it. So that's all relatively straightforward, yeah? And if we were at version three of the UI, um, they said the, the um, user experience person said, no, we don't like that. It looks ugly. We want to go for um, a select box. So uh, there's our select box. Do we have to change our code again? Yes, we do. Uh, why do we have to change our code again? Well, this, this time it's because we know it's a select box, and we have to we have to do select, and then once we've got the select, we can we can do the select by visiting text. What's changed about what we're actually performing in this test? Yeah, the locators, but but the actual um, what we're what we're trying to achieve. What's changed? The user actions have changed. Is there so so? That's that's in terms of um, how we do what we're doing. But what's changed in terms of what we're doing? So if I if I if I'm a user and I'm phoning up the uh, the dog company and I want to book in a service, uh, what's changed? If 
to the person on the end of the telephone, is it any different to them? No. So, that, so the, actual, the actual thing that we're trying to do hasn't changed. So we can take, we can take a step towards that. Um, we can take a step towards um, making that more explicit by um, adding in some metadata to our application. So if we have a look at the, uh, the um, code here, so we actually, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, that might work. Can you see here, um, I've, got, I've got this data question thing here, it says service required. All right, so this is, this, is the, this is sort of the application explaining what the information it wants from the user is. So if we think of it as a, a conversation between the application and the person who's using it, the application is saying, I need to know um, what service you want and how you implement it um, is, is up to you. Um, in this case, we're doing it with, with the uh, input element. Does that make sense? So if we then look at the same three examples again, so version one, version two, and version three, the CSS selector um, now looks very similar between the three of them. We've asked for the, uh, the question. Instead of, instead of looking for it by ID, we've looked for a question for the thing that we're interested in. Um, obviously, uh, we've still got the, the subselect here, the, the um, uh, input, input and select, but it's essentially the same, the same question three times over. It's just implemented in three different ways. And all three of these work again. Um, if I change the URL here, um, will this will this CSS selector work? Will this will this um, test work if I if I use a different version of the UI? Well, why not? That's not fair. It's, the, it's 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 trying to do the same thing, isn't it? Why why can't I just change it and, and use the use the um, different version of the UI? So uh, if you if you uh, Look back here. I've also um, added in um, some extra metadata, which which is um, the application telling the uh, user. In this case, um, like I, I've used the metaphor robot handles, and I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but if we imagine that um, our user is a robot, and the application um, is having a conversation with the robot, um, the robot has some answers, and the application has some questions. And what we're doing is we're facilitating a conversation where the um, application says, this is a question I want answered, and this is how I would like you to answer it, um, the robot can then say, okay, well, I know how to answer that type of question, and I have the answer for that type of question. Does that make sense? Yeah? So here's, here's a version where I've got the, um, the question, the question is the service required, and the answer to what I want answered is the groom. I want, I want it to be green. So now, um, this, this one's using version three. I can, I can do the select version. And um, I, I've made it much more explicit that we're using the question and select by visible text answer. Does that make sense? Is everyone following that? Okay. So this still won't, this still won't work if I change the URL. We're getting closer, we're getting closer to something where I can work against all three UIs. So this, these, these, these selectors here, these are the kind of things that you usually end up with in your, in your um, page objects. And you'll, you'll find this kind of thing repeated over and over again. It's, it's always the same pattern. And one of the things in um, object-oriented design is if you see the same thing happening all over the place, if there's lots and lots of duplication, then probably that's something that should be extracted into its own and called in a different way. So what I would really like to do is just say once, this is how I want to interact with text fields, this is how I want to interact with radio buttons, and this is how I want to interact with select fields, and then have the application and the, and the robot work out amongst themselves. Does that make sense? So what I'd really like to say Um, 
what I'd really like to say is something like this. What, what I'd like to say. Um, I'd like to say um, the application start at version one of the uh, HTML, create a robot, and then tell the application that the service required is free. Does that make sense? Yeah? Does this work? Does this, do you think this code would work? Why, why not? I'm not, I'm not telling it how to interact with the elements. OK. OK. I'll, uh, I'll show you then. Bear with a bit of luck, fingers crossed. Working. The, the curse of the demo. Oh, there we go. It's it's Java, and it's running on it's running on a fairly fairly old MacBook um, Air, so so it's not the fastest. Um, some sometimes it's quicker. It's, uh, so so that worked. Yay. So let's let's have a look at how it worked. Um, so we've got this. Um, so in this case, um, I've renamed the um, uh, the uh, web driver to application. So this is just pure web driver. Now, this is, this is just proof of concept code. It's just to show what can be done. Um, if we were going to do this um, as a framework that people, well, we will be doing this as a framework that people will be able to just download and install. And then we'll start abstracting things away. But at the moment, we're just acting purely on the web driver just to show what's possible. Um, so so this, is, this is just web driver. There's nothing, there's nothing special here. But what we do have is we have this robot. And um, in the robot, we have a method called tell which takes um, the application, a question, and an answer that it wants, um, wants to, um, it, wants, it knows the answer to. It's, it has a question that it knows the answer to. So we then find the element by the, the CSS selector. So you remember I added that metadata for the data question. So all types of, uh, no matter what the implementation of the UI is, they all have this um, data question metadata on them, okay? Um, so first of all, um, the, it finds the element using WebDriver, and then it uses um, the um, the other metadata that I added, the data question type, to look up how I interact with that type of element. So if you remember, we said that um, we had the data HTML um, text, yeah. So um, this is right. So the keyboard shortcuts for some reason are. Um, messed up on this at the moment, so I have to keep toggling out of presentation mode. Um, so we've got, um, for example, HTML radio. So uh, we declare at the start that this is a robot handle for HTML radio, and, uh, and that's the thing that comes in the um, data question type. So how you interact with an HTML radio is you find the element underneath the element that's marked with the question that has the format um, input value equals the answer, and then you click on it. Does that make sense? So that means that means if we have um, like three values, um, walk, broom, and sit, and I've asked it to look for broom, it will look up the value that has broom in, the, in it and then click on it. Um, we can do the same for uh, the HTML um, select. There's our text. Um, so again, we say we declare it as being a robot handle for text, and the way we interact with that is we find the element that has the input, and then we send the key to the answer. And the same again for HTML select. So in all cases, we find the appropriate question, and then we have a little adapter that tells us how to interact with that question type. Does that make sense? So if we go back to the uh, examples, I put this into presentation. Mode. 
So what will happen now if I change the, the version of the uh, UI? Should work. Fingers crossed. It's Java, so it's slow. It's not that it's not that Java's slow; it's the the JVM side up. Here we go. Three options. One of the reasons this is so slow at the moment is because it's actually doing um, some reflection in the background to um, find the robot handles. Um, so so it actually looks through. Um, Looks in looks in many many places and, and it takes four to six seconds on the initial startup for it to find those. So it, so it can be quite slow, um, but it's that, but once it gets going, it's quite quick. So there is a way to make that faster, um, but it involves um, narrowing down the search range. So um, at the moment, we have to search the entire Java namespace looking for robot handles. Um, what I don't want to do is force people to put it in a certain package. So at the moment, um, my robot handles live in com.riverglide.robot handles, um, but I don't want to make everyone put them in com.riverglide.robot handles. So um, that's why it's slow. Um, if we were going to do this as a proper implementation, we'd probably do it in a way where you can say, this is where you can look for my robot handles. That you know, they'll be the default ones in, in the Riverglide package namespace, and then you can specify com.google if you work for Google or, or however you want to organize your code. Um, but what we didn't want to do is, is restrict people at this point. So um, it did work. Did, did everyone see it flash up on the screen? Um, so so that's, that's a little bit of an improvement, isn't it? It's like now we've got a version where the tests don't have to change when the UI changes. Um, let me, if I just uh, sort of kill off this bit here. Should I just, sorry? Yes? Yes. Yes. So I'll I'll, um, I'll go back to that. I'll show you. Um, so so here, can you can you see here? This one says um, data question type equals HTML text. There, there should there, there there might actually be a, a, a way of um, inferring that without having to um, write it into the code explicitly. Um, and also for the for the same reasons, there might be something that we can do with ARIA around the question type as well. So. So it might be possible to take to, to, to use ARIA attributes. So is everyone familiar with ARIA, the accessibility attributes? Yeah. So for screen readers and things. So one of the, one of the things that's quite valuable to take away from this is that the things that make it easier for the robot to interact with it are also things that would make it easier for a human to interact with it. Because what we're doing is we're adding useful information about what we're trying to achieve, the questions that we're asking into the page. And if we've got that. Um, collaboration with the developers, we can actually get that ad added in um, relatively easily. Um, they, you know, if if the if the um, developers are using templates for doing their HTML, um, or they're using um, something like Polymer or Angular to write widgets, um, you can practically get that for free because you, you just draw a template, you have that metadata there, and then you just you just instantiate that. So so at the moment at the moment we're hard coding it and we're making it obvious. Um, and that's that's for demonstration purposes, but there might be um, a, a better way of doing that. So so this isn't this isn't the the be all and end all. This is this is just proof of concept demonstration code. Um, so if I if I go on to um, sort of version two, um, you can see that the HTML type there is HTML radio. Yes. Yeah. It, so, so if there was a if there was a, a mistake in the uh, HTML, um, yes, it would it, the the robot would fail. Um, but then that's the same situation that you already have with page objects, where if they um, if they change the the type and don't update it correctly. So if they if they didn't update the ID correctly, or if they didn't update some other metadata that you're using for your um, selectors, that would equally cause cause the uh, the test to fail. Yes, yeah. So, so the question was, does does that mean that we can make the change just in one place? 
um, in the UI. And yes, that's that's what we can do with this. We can we can make the change in one place because the tests don't have to change. So um, let me um, just. Yes. Um, so um, it's not something that I'm familiar enough with to be able to talk about with any um, with any authority. There's a the the it's a W3C spec um, called um, accessibility. It's 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 called ARIA A R I A, and it's a way of adding um, extra metadata into the. Um, application so that screen readers can understand what the purpose of the uh, the elements on the page are for. Um, so, so um, one of the ways to do it. Um, who's familiar with using um, unordered lists as navigation? Has anyone has anyone seen that? No, you know you know where you have a tab list at the top of at top of the page for for navigation. Um, quite often that's implemented as a list. Um, but the um, the semantics for a list don't really lend themselves to navigation. So what ARIA lets you do is you say that this list here is actually a, a set of navigation attributes, and each of these things is a place we can navigate to. So it makes it easier when when the screen reader is reading, um, it can it will, it can um, explain. To, so uh, like a screen reader is for somebody who's blind, um, they they can't actually see what the screen looks like. They can't see what order the what order the tabs are in, they can't see where the where the fields are on the page. The screen reader needs to be able to infer from that. And if if the way that you've written the page makes that difficult for the for the screen reader, the ARIA attributes are a way that you can give it explicit information to help it out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so so it's quite possible um, that the same mechanism that ARIA uses to inform the screen readers, we could use to inform the robot. And that would then make, make that would give us a double bonus in that by making our um, application ARIA compliant, we'd also make it robot compliant. Woo, win. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna run this again, which this one is the, uh, it's now running against the um, select version. Um, I think, I don't think that's the one we ran last time. And this, this one should just work. And what we've done is we've abstracted how we do something from what we're doing. So we've abstracted the question that we're answering from how we answer that question. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, so like the metaphor of robot handles, it's, 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 it's going to be something that we're changing. But the, the, um, the concept of robot handles was a conversation I was having with a few colleagues. And I was trying to explain um, why um, the existing kind of uh, automation tests tend to be quite brittle. And if you think about um, a robot that's moving um, something delicate like eggs from one place to another, um, if all of the eggs are exactly the same size, then our robot can be fairly simple. If they're always the same size, the same orientation, and they always end up in the same place, then the programming for the robot can be just go over here, grip this much, move over here, release. Um, but as soon as we start to add any variation into that, that, that robot would fail. And um, so if we have different size eggs, um, or the eggs come in different orientations, or um, uh, we, stop, we stop doing eggs and we start doing cartons of milk or something, um, that robot will then fail. It's brittle. Um, so what can we do to make it easier? Well, we could make it so that the robot is incredibly intelligent. So we could add loads of sensors, touch sensors, sight sensors. So it can go over, it can identify the orientation, it can identify how much pressure to apply, it can weigh it and know, know how much grip to apply. Um, but that makes a very complex robot. And what we find um, in tests is that sometimes to get around the problem of a change in UI, we do start to do a lot of analysis of the, of the page before we start trying to interact with it. Um, and that, that makes our test code complicated. And if it's complicated and we don't have the support, um, we don't have the, if we, if we either don't have the support of the developers or we don't have enough skills to manage that complexity, that can become very unwieldy very quickly. So the um, so those those two options the uh, the it's always in the same place option is like X path, um, but it's very easy to break because we just change where something is on the page. Um, the um, very intelligent robot is let's write an entirely separate application purely for testing this other application. We've just added a whole bunch of complexity. Another option is we can we can create a set of attachments for our robot 
and we can create a set of boxes um, that, the, that the delicate objects go into. And then all we need to do is apply the right robot handle. So that's where the robot handles metaphor comes from. It makes our job easier by giving us an abstraction around the thing that we're trying to take. So now all the um, robot has to do is identify which handle it needs, and then it can pick it up and move it to the second place. So, so there, there we go. That, that I left, I left it up on the screen that time. It, it actually, it actually selected the right, um, the right type there. One of the next, one of the next steps we can go from that is, is actually we don't really need to explicitly tell the application every time what we want to, uh, what we want it to set. What we could say is our user has a set of knowledge. Um, it has some things that it knows about, and then if the application asks for those things, we can then add those in. We can say, oh, I know how to answer this because now it, we don't actually have to. We don't have to know in advance what the what the um, application is going to ask us. So, so um, our better example is here, and we can say that the user knows that the service required is going to be a groom, and then it exchanges that knowledge with the application. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's not that's not too much of a leap. So this this one again. Um, this will work against um, all all the versions of the uh, of the UI. So this one's currently working against um, the text box one because it's version one. Just, just for demonstration purposes. It's, there's, there's absolutely no other reason. It's, uh... Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue talking while that's doing its thing. Um... Yeah. It's, it's really strange. Like um, as soon as when, we, when I was setting up, um, I was trying to connect the projector in, and just as soon as the connect, uh, projector was connected, I couldn't even log in because everything slowed right down. So I don't know if that's on a machine or if the if the projector is uh, like the projector is stealing the energy from my computer or something. Um, okay, let's 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 just sort of go back. So 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 far, what we've done. Is um, we've we've um, abstracted um, what we're what we're doing from how we're doing it. So that means that um, if we're doing something clever with JavaScript, um, so something like select two, um, which replaces select boxes with um, much nicer JavaScript select boxes, um, all we have to do to make that work with the code um, is create a new robot handle that works with data select two. Yeah. Um, and then that will work with all instances of select two throughout our application, as long as we have that communication. And this is why I was asking earlier whether, um, when we're working as the three amigos, are we working on the same computer or are we working separately? Because obviously, if we're working together, um, then we can do the we can do these things together. We can say, okay, well let's let's make the change to the application. Let's make the change to the let's add the robot handle that's required to make the test work. Or we can say, let's add what we think is the robot handle to make the test work. Let's make it work in the application. We can do it together. Whereas if there's that separation, if it's a case of testing is something that happens after the event, um, that makes that much that much more difficult. So obviously, this is something that works better when you when you're working together as a team at the same time rather than separately and, and going your own way. Um, so I'll just. Um, this, this exchange knowledge um, with thing here, uh, we have the ability to learn from the application and the ability
capability to inform the application. So what this does, learn from the application um, says, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the, um, the uh, web driver for any um, elements that have data knowledge attached to them. Um, so this is a way, this is, this is metadata that flags up things that we think the user is going to be interested in. So for example, if we were doing a um, flight booking system, it might be the booking reference for the, um, the, the, the booking when it's completed. These are the sort of things that the user needs to know. And we know what those are going to be because we're, you know, we're doing this for somebody at the end of the day, aren't we? We're, so so it's, we're, we're trying to facilitate a conversation. If I'm, if I'm an actual user using um, a flight booking system, then there's a bunch of things that I know, which is where I'm flying from, where I'm flying to, and the dates that I'm flying. And then there's some things that the, um, the booking system will tell me, such as how much it's going to cost, um, what my booking number is, and um, what seats I've got maybe. Um, so this is a way for us to say, these are the things that I want to know, and these are the things that I do know. Does that make sense? So the first thing we do is we, we look through the application and we learn from it. So anything that the, the application knows, we will then take that into our knowledge. So we now know that as well. And then we inform the application of the things that we know about. So informing is a case of, for every question that the application has, if we know what that answer is, um, we, we will fill it in. And another, another benefit of this is it means that we don't have to be um, overly specific on the amount of um, questions that we have. Because as people, we already know much more than the application is asking of us. Um, by, by abstracting away what we know from um, how we enter that into the, into the application, we now, don't get ab we, don't, we now don't get errors if that question isn't being asked on, on the page. So if, the, if, the, if I know um, what my age is, but the application isn't asking for my age, I won't get a no element exception when I'm trying to um, enter my age, because I'm not going to do that. What I'm doing is saying, what do you want to know about me? And the, the page just says, I want to know your name, so I just tell it my name. So I've got, um, that, that, that one has crashed. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on there. That's still spinning from before. Yep. Um, that's, this is inside the robot, yeah. So um, go back to the test. Okay. There we go. So um, in this case, the user knows that the service required is, is green. So I've, I've, got, I've got a slightly more complicated example um, here. I'll, I'll bring that up on the screen first. This this one's a, a much much um, much more complicated form, but it's still using the same three elements that we defined. Because obviously, like you don't want to get into too complicated. Um, if we if we were doing this in a real application, this is obviously way too simple. But um, for for a real application, we define more complicated robot handlers. So we've got the name of the event is Selenium Comp 2016. It asks for my name, asks for my gender, and it asks for the country. And it also um, asks for my opinion on. So we tell we tell the uh, we tell the robot what it knows. Um, so it knows that uh, my name is Andy Palmer. Uh, it knows that my gender is male. It knows that I'm currently in India because uh, we, we are, and it knows that leaving the EU is a very big mistake. And uh, this should uh, and then afterwards we want to know we want to assert that having visited this page that the user now knows that the name of the event is equal to Selenium Comp 2016. Does that make sense? Will it run? So that's not will it work, it's will it run. <laughs> oh, certainly thinking about it.
just said what I knew and brought them together, and it, and it all just worked. So there's, there's, there's been no changes. So, so for all of these robot examples, all I've done is defined how I interact with um, text boxes, how I interact with select boxes, and how I interact with radio buttons, and then I just tell the, the application what it knows. And because the application um, tells me uh, the type of questions, that all just works. So that's 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 um, that's the demonstration. That's that's what we've got so far. Um, any questions? Yes. <sighs> hmm. So so if I if I take. So the, the question was, um, will that lead to any negative consequences, um, such as um, if I take out the, uh, the gender field, um, it'll just run and it's just fine. Um, that's, that's actually a really interesting question. If I took out gender from the application, it would run just fine. Um, it wouldn't, it, because it didn't ask for gender, it wouldn't add it. Um, so, so that's... It really depends on what we're trying to test. If, if, the, if the application can't continue without the gender field in there, then we'd expect there to be some other validation at something later in the, like some later event. Um, so, so it's not necessarily um, a problem. Um, it might be a problem. It's, it's one of those things, but then that's another place for it to break if it isn't a problem. So, so if, we were, if we were explicitly testing for gender and they removed gender because it was no longer necessary, um, then the test would break as well. Um, but then it would be breaking for a wrong, the wrong reason. So it's 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 uh, it's 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 uh, it's a balance, isn't it? You have to you have to sort of um, balance. You have to weigh whether not having a field that you think you should have is more important than having a um, a field which um, you don't need. You could do that. Um, my, so, so uh, Anthony was asking, um, is it possible um, to add an assertion against the application that the application knows what the gender is? Um, I would, I would actually be tempted to say um, to, to do that in a different way and ask whether the user, the robot, knows whether it's been asked that question. So, so it would be more a case of um, here's the questions that I was asked and gave answers to, and here's the questions that I wasn't asked. Are those important? So you could then. You could then do. Um, have you have you come across the term approval testing? No. Uh, anyone approval testing? Uh, appro approval testing is um, something we'll do, for example, like with with um, for the look and feel of a website. So so what we'll do is we'll take a screenshot of a website as it was, and we'll say this is what we expect the website to look like, and then um, in the next week, if there's a if there's a significant difference for it, the test will fail. It's not failing because it's wrong, it's failing because it's different. So what it's saying is, there's been a change, I wasn't expecting a change, have a look at it and see if those things are uh, okay. And if you say, yes, that's okay, then the new one becomes the new baseline. So what we could do for your question is we could say, okay, here's a list of questions that we were, here's a list of things that we know and weren't asked about. And then if it suddenly stopped asking us about that question, we can say, oh, it stopped asking about that question, is that okay? Do we mind? And that, that then lets a human sort of decide whether that's the right thing or not. But obviously that's that's a slightly different um, topic than, than the interaction with the, with the web page. Does that answer the question? Yeah? Um, yes. But so but the, 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 the point the purpose of this of this talk was to say uh, we don't always want the test to fail when when there's so so that's that's what I'm saying. It's like uh, you might you might want it to you might want it to fail if there's a change, but you want it to fail for the right reason. So that would be more of an approval test than a than an application failure. Um, yeah. Does, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 
so the, so the question was, can you use the ID as a selector rather than adding the metadata? And yes, you can. Um, one of the reasons that I didn't do that um, for this example is because you can actually ask the same question multiple times in different ways, and IDs have to be unique. So um, what, what I want to know is um, if, if I'm asking, oops, sorry, if I'm asking what my name is, um, normally I'd expect that to be um, a text field. But later on, I might be saying, uh, say on Facebook, where you're tagging people um, in, a, in a photo, I might be selecting from a drop down list, and I might be asked the same question multiple times. But this time, using ID won't, won't work because um, I've already, it's already asked my name at an earlier point. Um, so that would then mean I'd have to add the same knowledge, I'd have to add um, my name then tag one, tag two, tag three, which isn't necessarily what I want to know, what, or not necessarily what I'd want to do. What I really want to do is say, um, this is my name and I'm in this picture. And so when it asks my name, it automatically works. Um, so, so you can. Um, all of this is proof of concept. All of this is just demonstration code. Um, it's all available on GitHub, um, so, so you can check it out. It's um, at riverglide um, slash robot handle example. Um, and, and so you, you can have a look at how it works, and then and then if you if you like this way of doing things, you can adapt it for yourself. It's, it's, this is um, this is just showing what can be done. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, um, how do you handle dynamic uh, um, elements on the page? Um, the example was um, dragging and dropping files onto the uh, onto the uh, onto the page, and then having the multiple files come up with different IDs. Um, I would imagine that you would that that, that would be a um, like a the, the placeholder would be the the question that's being asked, and then the the files would be the answers that appear. Um, and I imagine it would work um, in much the same way as what we've got already, except that you now have multiple elements. So in the, in the same way, like Facebook tagging, um, tagging pictures, you might have multiple people tagging a picture. Um, so you, you'd have to write a separate robot handle for that, and it would have to be able to deal with the um, multiple um, types. But yes, I, I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work, but I haven't tried it, so I can't give you the implementation details. Um, if you, if you can send me an example, I'd be happy to play with it and, 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 and see what I can do. Yeah? Okay, are there any? Oh, yep, one at the back. Yes. Okay, so the question is, um, sometimes the business logic is depending on what questions are asked. So for example, um, if the um, gender is uh, male, it might then ask for age, whereas if gender is female, it might not ask for age. And if that's part of what you're trying to test is that um, the behavior of the application is that it shouldn't ask for age um, when um, gender is female, then that's, that's an extension. So that's, that's similar to the question from the front earlier, which is, um, should we check to see when questions aren't asked? And, and so in that instance, what, um, it doesn't do it at the moment, um, but it'd be a relatively straightforward um, change to say, these are the questions that haven't been asked. And so we could then set up a scenario that says, um, given that um, my user is female, when I, um, when I interact with the application, then the questions that I weren't asked include age. Um, but it doesn't do that at the moment, but it's, it's relatively straightforward to add that. Okay, no worries. Okay, so I think I think that's time. So thank you very. Oh, sorry. 
Yes, they're up on GitHub. They're, they're at Riverglide. Um, so github.com slash Riverglide um, slash uh, robot handles examples. Um, I, I don't actually have that up on the, on the screen. Sorry. Um, but I did, I, I, in the, in the um, So this is this is um, this is Riverglide. So if, if you um, if you um, look for our um, GitHub repository, you can find it on there, um, or or just email me or, or um, tweet me, and I'll I'll sort it out. Okay. All right. Thanks very much.